Hello, and welcome to the second video of my 10 part in depth Breath of the Wild Any% Percent tutorial series. In this video, we'll cover the complete first segment of the run from gaining control of Link in the Shrine of Resurrection through the Bomb Shrine. In the first video of this series, I went over the detailed explanations for all the essential information you'll need to understand and follow along with the rest of these videos. So anytime you need refreshing on the details of how to perform some of the glitches, make sure to go back and reference that video. There are timestamps in the description for quick access to specific sections. And should anything be outdated by the time you're watching this, and I've made an updated addendum video, you'll see a card pop up in the upper right corner for that, as well as a link in the description for those new strats. And with that, let's begin. The timer starts when you first gain control of the link inside the Shrine of Resurrection, not when you select a new game from the title screen. To actually begin your run, you can be mashing X and plus at the time when you hear Zelda tell Link to wake up the second time. In French, she'll be saying Réveille-toi. This is when you can skip the end of this initial cutscene and gain control of Link. As you gain control of Link, you want to already be holding up left and B to sprint over to the pedestal and press A to enter the Sheikah Slate cutscene. There will be two text boxes to skip through using B, and the cutscene will end as the doors are opening. As it ends, you want to start mashing R3 to activate the Slate Scope feature. The first time you do this, a cutscene will be activated. As soon as you see this cutscene begin, you can start mashing Y to cancel out of it, which is faster than continuing to mash R3, and you want to be holding up right to run towards this wall for the run's first big glitch, a scope clip. This is faster and way more beneficial than running through the front door because besides saving time from skipping the next two intro cutscenes, you'll also avoid activating the day-night cycle and the weather cycle. This means the game will always stay at 5.15 a.m. on a sunny morning, which is super helpful for consistent visual cues in your setups because the lighting and shadows remain constant, and worrying about being able to climb surfaces in the rain is a non-issue, as is being randomly attacked by stall enemies that only pop up at night. The drawback of this clip is that the shrines will not be able to be activated as intended via the pedestal outside the front door, but we'll get to that. To perform this clip, run towards the wall, hop up towards this design here, and run straight into the corner against the post. This clip is somewhat inconsistent because you're constantly moving in place against this corner, but keep in mind that Link's position is most important, then the angle of the field of view lines, and then the camera angle has the least effect, if any. But you should keep an eye open for a bounce in the camera as a cue that Link's position and field of view are set properly. To do this, aim Link's position on the minimap ever so slightly to the right of this X here. The field of view line should be in this general position. Once your angle is set, start mashing R3 until Link scope clips through the wall. Sometimes the scope will activate, but you won't clip through. That just means you are really close, but not quite there. Sometimes when this happens, Link will climb up a little higher on the wall. You do not want that as you cannot clip through from up there. Just keep trying until you make it through, and don't worry, you're not doing any damage to the right thumbstick, it's designed to be pressed. Once you've done it, you'll be out of bounds. The fastest way to get back in bounds is to whistle sprint forward until you see this texture here and start running up the wall alongside it. The most efficient way up is to do two climb hops and then whistle sprint up the slope past these textures until your stamina is fully or just barely almost fully recharged. Then do three more climb hops all the way up to the top where you'll enter cold temperatures. Here you'll find a ceiling where the floor of the overworld begins. You can crouch by pressing L3 and wedge Link into the corner while walking up this dark spot right here. Uncrouch when you're in this position and Link should pop right back in bounds and you can continue running along the hillside. From here you'll see this indentation in the rock. Run in that direction and use this texture above it as a guide to run in a straight line. Now we're heading towards a Bokalan camp where we'll pick up a pot lid shield and a Boko spear. Manage your stamina properly and make sure to whistle sprint once you get to this spot right here, as that's how you'll pull the Bokos in towards you and away from their weapons, giving you the most opportunity to grab a spear. Continue running down the hill. When you're first starting out, it's good to grab as much backup food as possible, and you can take up to six peppers by running to the right of the tree and doing a quick hook to the left. Keep in mind, however, that every new item you pick up throughout your run will give you a two-second text box, so the less unique items you pick up throughout your runs, the more time you'll save. 
If you're not going to run for food, you can run to the left of the tree and make a slightly straighter line towards the pot lid. You can stay to the left of the pot lid and still pick it up in passing to keep your lines as tight as possible as you raise the bokos to go grab the second spear against the log before they do. Once you've grabbed the spear, run away in this direction and you'll do an instant shield jump over the little slope here and do a clean shield surf around the bend until you're stopped by another cutscene. When it's finished, press B to exit the text box and do another instant shield jump to surf down the hill to the Temple of Time. Now it's time to do the first shield clip of the run. Head over to this wall and make sure to do a quick whistle sprint to alert the Bokoblin guarding around the corner. This will cause him to leave his post and come investigate what's going on. Now we need to set skew so we can clip through the window. If you're not familiar with the concept of setting skew, again, go back and watch the first video. Everything is explained there. Now, climb up this side of the Temple of Time above this spot right here. Hold ZL to ready your shield and then roll your thumb from B to A. Link should let go of the wall, do a neutral shield jump and fall until the shield hits this ledge. If done properly, you will now have skew. Climb back up, this time to the window ledge. Hold R to throw aim at the window at this position, and also press and hold ZL so Link is already set to do a shield jump in a moment. You want Link's foot up on the wall like this, and have him tucked a bit into the corner like this. Now you can reference the minimap in the corner again for this clip. I like to have the field of view lines go through this X about here, and you'll notice that Link's turned towards the window at a slight angle. This clip is quite lenient, so once you get comfortable with it, most people line up their shot and go for the clip with barely any setup. But while you're starting out, another visual cue that may work well for you is to keep your aim on your crosshair somewhere between this black line and this center support piece of the window. Once you have Link's angle and position set, press B to cancel your throw aim. Now, while still holding ZL, do an instant shield jump by pressing up on the control stick and X simultaneously and then immediately rolling down, down to A to do the instant shield jump. Once you're midair, you'll want to quickly press left on the D-pad to pull up your shield menu, unequip the pot lid, and if done correctly, Link should clip right through the window when you leave the menu. If you're having window panes, try nudging the camera up a tiny smidge right before another clip attempt. This seems to have an effect on finicky or weak skews working enough to get you through in a pinch. On the other side, you'll find yourself right in front of a treasure chest. Open it and take the bow inside. Once you've skipped the text box from picking it up, run over here to these clay pots. Ideally, the Bokoblin on guard outside the front of the Temple of Time should still be making his way around the side of the building to investigate the whistle noise it heard a moment ago. Break the pot on the left for a guaranteed five pack of arrows. You can do this by running into it or picking it up and throwing it against the wall. Now that you have a bow and five arrows, you want to do a quick fix so that the next glitch works first try. To do this, aim with your bow until you see the crosshair and then cancel the shot by pressing B. Now you're ready to do the first BLSS of the run. If you don't pull out your bow and put it away really quick like I just showed you, Link will drop the clay pot on the first BLSS setup attempt for a new game file every single time. But now you're good to go. So set up the BLSS, and once you're ready, there are several ledges around this area that we can take off from. This ledge right here is the ideal ledge for takeoff for speediness, but it can be tricky to hop up onto, and if you're not careful, you can break the pot in doing it. Also, the Pacoblin will be coming back to his post by about now, and will hear you struggling if you don't do it first try, and come and interrupt your flow. There are a couple other spots right here in the Temple of Time that will also work, and that are a little bit safer, albeit not as fast. Once you've gotten takeoff and you're sliding across the sky, keep wiggling to build speed and turning the camera in this direction to aim for the box that the bomb shrine is in. Once you're overhead, you can drop the BLSS and when you're close enough to the ground, initiate a fall damage cancel to land safely. Preferably, you want to land as close to this side of the shrine as possible so that you're already where you need to be to position Link to clip inside the wall. You should still have skew from getting into the Temple of Time, which can be reused here. So there's no need to do another skew setup unless your skew is lost. And so let's talk about that really quick. If you need to regain skew, you can do so by doing an instant shield jump on this noodle area here. I find that doing it slightly to the left of the noodle towards the bottom is the really sweet spot. But whether the Temple of Time skew or the bomb's wall skew is what you're using, the setup will be the same to clip inside through the wall. Stand in this position here with Link's head just to the right of this V texture. 
set up your left side of your field of view line to be just to the left of the yellow beacon on your minimap. Keep in mind this will only work on a new save file because if you're trying to practice or follow along with this clip while playing on a regular casual file, the yellow beacon could be anywhere else depending on what you have it set to. When Link's position and angle are both set, do another forward shield jump, unequip the shield mid jump, and just like you did to get in the Temple of Time, you should go right through the wall. Once inside, re-equip your shield and you're ready for the second clip into the elevator. To do this, you want to continue holding ZL, never let off of it until you're up inside the elevator. Move slightly over to the left until you see this floating texture here. And do another forward shield jump, unequipping midair, and Link should make it through up into the elevator. This could also fail several different ways. Sometimes Link will stand up on top of the area like he's going to go through, but he cannot. This is typically a sign that you are too close or too far to the right. If you bonk while trying to do the elevator clip, you will lose skew. Fortunately though, this second clip into the bomb shrine doesn't require skew, so you can actually still make the jump into the elevator once you're familiar with it, but obviously it is more tricky without the skew. Once you're up on the elevator, mash A until it activates and X to skip the cutscene of Link going down inside the shrine. After the loading screen, you can mash X again to stop the cutscene as fast as possible, and as the screen fades back in and you gain control of Link, you should be holding ZL, up left, and B. You'll feel a slight vibration in your controller as you're regaining control of Link, and as soon as you feel this vibration, let go of ZL and sprint towards the pedestal by continuing to hold up left and B. Doing this gives you a slight advantage over holding just up left and B, and saves frames only, so obviously it's not mandatory, but it's definitely a super easy trick that's worth implementing into your muscle memory from the start as you're learning the game. When you make your way over to the pedestal, activate the bombs rune and go through the 32 seconds two additional text boxes to skip through here. Once you regain conditions of wind bomb to perform, let's talk about the faster, cooler, and more difficult one first. Because it's so early in the run, many people opt to go for the gamer wind bomb, and I recommend this. It's a very precise wind bomb and can save a lot of time when done successfully. But even if you don't nail it, you can still make your way into the next main room and it's faster than going the intended route of blowing up the blocks and running through the shrine. To perform the gamer wind bomb, you turn away from the pedestal and you run towards the entry elevator here. On your way over, unless you bonked outside getting into the elevator, clear your glitched ragdoll state by doing a shield jump and unequipping on one of the two frames where you see skew animation. Now you're ready to hop up onto the pedestal and perform a turn wind bomb. So have patience as you practice and get to understand the mechanics of this glitch. You should also be relatively comfortable with front hop wind bombs before you expect too much success with a turn wind bomb. Also, Vivo's in-depth wind bomb tutorials are linked in the description for this video. For those of you who really want to go down the wind bomb rabbit hole, those videos are gold. To hop up on this pedestal, you can throw aim at it perpendicularly, cancel the aim with B, and push forward to step up. Once there, throw aim again, and hold ZL, and put the top crosshair on this mark of the rock right here to set Link's angle. Now, do a front hop, drop your circle, slightly delay entering bullet time to create some distance between Link and the bomb, and this should help launch Link further rather than higher. Switch the square, drop your square, switch back to circle, do a turn to the left aiming at this spot right here, and detonate the circle bomb. If done properly, you will launch Link all the way across the shrine to the monk. If you did it almost all the way properly, but not quite, Link will make it into the big final last room, but not all the way up top, and you'll have to get up and finish making your way through. The second wind bomb option you can use is a standard front hop. It's easier and faster to set up, but it will not have a chance at launching you all the way over to the monk the way the gamer wind bomb does, only to the main floor of the second room. To perform this one, stand right here with one foot up and one foot down on the platform. You can use visual cues such as the tiles or the shadows to help you remember where to stand for Link's position. And to set Link's angle, I like to take the up and down reticles of the throw aim and line them up on the center seam between the two blocks blocking the way through. Then all you need to do is a standard front hop wind bomb, and that should launch you over the wall into the next room. 
Once there, you can make your way down, blow up the rocks blocking this ladder up ahead with one bomb thrown at this mark right here on the wall as a guide. This should blow up the whole row. And finally, if you land over here, you have an option to do a BLSS over to the monk. This is quicker than hopping down, running over, throwing a bomb, climbing the ladder, and then sprinting over to the monk. Not to mention, there's a backup wind bomb option from the same general area as well. But once you make it to the end of the shrine, hit A to enter the cutscene, and at the same exact time that the blue glass shatters, hit the split on your timer, and you've just completed the first segment of the run. Congratulations. This is not easy to do your first time through. In fact, completing this segment super cleanly can even give top runners trouble, but you can do it. In the next video, we'll go over the Magnesis Shrine segment. It's shorter and easier than bombs, so be ready and stay tuned. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or in the Breath of the Wild speedrun Discord community, which is also linked in the description. And come by and say hi in my streams on Twitch. Follow me there as well, where I'm currently doing full any percent personal best run attempts four days a week Monday through Thursday, grinding my PB time as low as possible. Link for that is also in the description below. I'd love to see you there. Anyway, stick with it, keep practicing, and very soon you'll be running through the entire any percent route all on your own. And until next time, stay well, stay cool, and always keep punching out there.